good? I already started. Okay. All right. So, Miss Curry, um, so what we're trying to do is increase your literacy in your math class. And you would probably think, why do I need literacy in math class, right? I mean, I know you probably do some word problems or whatever, yeah. but it's not just the word problems. It's, um, and I'm going to share this with you in case for some reason you really want to get back over it. Um, but it's the idea of understanding the words in it, because that's what literacy is. I mean, obviously for me in social studies, it's going to be a little bit different than your literacy, but that's what we're going to try to talk about. So I put together, using all these resources that I found, just if you could focus on three things for literacy that would help you, I think, in your classroom. The first just being vocabulary. The other is mathematical quickies, which is something that Mr. Swinson wanted me to share with you. So it's this really old book of his, okay? Um, and we'll look through examples of it, and I have it embedded in there as well. But just the idea of how to make math fun. I mean, you like it, so I'm sure you know a way to make fun. And then modeling, and there's an example in this book I was gonna show you that. I haven't been in your classroom, but do you use word walls? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things that I'm gonna show you are a very elementary in nature and when I first heard of them I was like eh, we're not doing that in high school that's just not what we do and I probably discounted them and probably did not take them for their value until I saw those two using them in their classrooms um, and especially for the literacy literature part of it there was an anchor chart and we'll get to that in a second too there was an anchor chart that one of her teachers used years ago that I love and I copied it and started using it in my classroom and I think sometimes we think, oh man, that's baby talk, we're not using elementary, but it can be. You know, there are things that they learn in elementary school that will impact us. And if you think about some of the levels of our students, yeah. they probably do need those visual reminders. So that's what a word wall would do. And there's a little video in here um, that talks about how word walls can, can help. And of course it's not coming up. But, um, and so again, you can play this on your own. And, and actually what they're doing is they're trying to get you to buy their word wall system. But it takes the words that you, the vocabulary that you use in your math class, makes a visual reminder of it, and also makes it very specific for math, such as solution, okay? When you use the word solution, it's gonna be different than the people down the hall when they're talking about a science solution, okay? So um, you definitely wanna make those math specific terms. Um, it's going to help with your ELL students a lot so that they can understand the difference. You know, when they hear a certain word, um, it's going to have a different meaning whether it's an English class, a science class, or a math class. So, um, so putting all those word walls together, and then you can take those, a word wall, you know, you've got one word up there, but then if you put them on index cards too, students can play games with them. It can be a vocabulary reminder for them. So there's some examples in here of very positive word walls. And of course, Pinterest has a bunch on there. Um, and I do think it's something that we could put up to help remind those students how, how to use it. You know, you'll want to cover them up on test day. You'll want to take them down for the end of course tests. But I think it is a nice visual reminder. Um, at our school, Tori Anglin, is a she uses word walls beautifully in her class and it's history but she'll have a word they have to write the word they have to draw an image they have to do a sentence they have to do a lot with their word so it becomes much bigger than just you know random words on the wall she does a really good job with it the next example would to, um, is the mathematical quickies and this was a guy that he used to write for a math magazine and what he did was he would take a short little math equation okay and, and I, some of these are going to be higher level than what your students are doing but you could go through them or find any of your math problems that you're using almost as a bell ringer idea and then the goal is to explain that in as few words as possible so they're having to incorporate their math, they're having to use their vocabulary, and then they're trying to synthesize it down to the absolute smallest explanation. So if you did one of these, let's say one a week, you know, as a, as a warm up or as a bell ring or as an exit ticket, however you wanted to, it really does get them incorporating several of those different skills that we want. So I put an example of it in there, just how you would solve that. And then there it is written out. Okay, so some of them are written in more, um, pros, but some of them are just using the other equations that you would use in math. So, and 
and said, this is Mr. Swenson's book. And um, so he's passing that on, to, uh, not to keep, but as ideas. And then the last one is something that just, I think because I'm not math minded, it made so much sense when I read about it. It's just something called modeling. And here's an example here that I, I've got linked in there too. So it's the teacher, and as she goes through, she's just saying how she would approach that math problem doing it verbally so that the students see you doing it, seeing that sometimes you struggle or sometimes you come up with a couple of different equations. And instead of, the difference here is instead of explaining how you probably teach and you're explaining how to get to the solution, you are modeling the thought processes that go on in your head. So, and there's a video that links to that too. So with those just, and then the sources, that you can then go back and look at those if, if you wanted to. So just three ideas on how to, three different strategies on how to help with the math literacy in your classroom. Do you think you would use any of those? Yeah, actually I'd already thought about doing a word wall on my back wall because it's white and I don't use it. Right. And then actually I do a little bit of the modeling with my students. Like when I'm explaining how to do a problem, I'm like, okay, so think about these questions that I'm asking you. Think about this when you're doing, you know, the problem by yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think about maybe having them like, I mean, I know I can hear the grumbles right now. <laughs> But have you ever thought about having them write down that thought process, or, mm -hmm. or maybe not write it? I mean, you know, maybe um, I've got another friend that does a lot of podcasts. Maybe if they recorded themselves, you know, with a little iPhone or whatever, because you know they all have one, um, or with our Chromebooks, you know, mm -hmm. if they could record themselves doing that and then hear that thought process back, you know, they hear you and then they hear themselves that might help them and it might help some of those that think that they don't know math mm -hmm. it might give them some confidence in realizing oh everybody's got a little struggle that they go with and then they, they can come up with um yeah and so you you already do some of the modeling and you all and you've already thought about the word wall with the mathematical quickies um i know for me when i was doing this and i mean i'm like the opposite of math completely I told you I couldn't even read your test out loud. <laughs> um, but what I want to do, and I had a teacher years ago that and they're expensive. They're like $30 a piece, those big white like flip mm -hmm. chart kind of things. But he would do for his civics and economics class, he would put all these different numbers on there. And he would say, what do those numbers represent from a civics and economics point of view? And he used them as a, a warm-up activity. And I think I'm going to try to go back and bring that in just because... You know, right now we're all in this big literacy kick, we understand, but I remember years ago when we were like, you're on the math kick, you know, so kind of how education goes in and out. So he would do that and he would say, the number three, how does that come up in civics and economics? And the kids would have to write out all the meanings of the number three in civics and economics. That's kind of the same idea of the mathematical quickie in my class, but you could put it in. I think that would be one tool that you could maybe use in, in your class. So. Any other questions? Um, not, do I get to look through this? You will get um, a link to this book. It's actually, most of it is online now. So, and, and this is, I actually took this out of Mr. Swenson's office. So it's in his office at any time. Um, and this is my book for the class that I'm in. And I've really avoided the chapters on math because <laughs> I, don't, I don't do math. But when I went back and read them, mm -hmm. it, it helped me to understand not only for this project, but just seeing that the math literacy um, is not the same way as I think of literacy. And I think maybe that, especially for, for new teachers, because y'all are hearing so much about the higher order thinking and mm -hmm. literacy and all that kind of stuff that we're having to do, and the books that Mr. Swenson does have for us. Um, <coughs> I did not bring those. But the books that he does have for us are about higher order thinking. Well, how do you do that in a math class? And I think for me, anyway, I was like, they're not going to start reading word. It's not just word problems, but what does it mean? So that's where the mathematical quickies is that higher order thinking, and you're doing higher order processing. But then if you can get them to write something out, and it, again, it doesn't have to be in written form, mm -hmm. but if they can write out the equations and show your work, that's what helps them to understand that math literacy component, which in the end helps you know all the all the classes but yeah these are in my room um well that's in swinson's room until i get my room until i get back to <laughs> but yeah these are really good and the chapter on there's two chapters in here on math i'm glad to share that book with you if you're interested mm -hmm. so, and if you're interested in the learning more about the gardner web program too that shelly's doing and that i'm doing it's, it's been really good is that it oh no there's one more part so when i said anchor charts 
Mm -hmm. I would wanted us to work on this today, but I was playing around with it, so and I'm going to send it to you too. It's a program called Vengage. I used to make posters. And I just thought, if you had this in your classroom, so I put the three different things, and this is more for a teacher anchor chart, so maybe, maybe it's, whether it's like behind your desk, you know, for just you to remind yourself, or whether we put it like in your math workroom, you know, the little book room that y'all have. So it's just different ways to kind of remind yourself, and that's what an anchor chart does. So it's just reminders of strategies that you want to work on. Now, because for the students, you would have your anchor chart would be a, a process step of what they're trying to achieve in math. So, and I'll share that with you too, just as examples. Okay. And that's now it. All right, thanks. All right, Tate. And stay.